As the ambitious and greedy caters in his ranks of the economic freedom fighters, people interested more in craven political power, self-enrichment, and self-aggrandizement abandoned his party at a, like a pile of rats fleeing from a ship. Julius Malema lashes out for his electoral failure, blaming infiltration of his party and violation and betrayal of the revolutionary spirit. There is no revolutionary spirit in the economic freedom fighters, simply a bunch of grifters who take from the poor their votes and deliver nothing to the poor, simply being outcast in parliament and in metro governments, wherever they are. They have accomplished absolutely zero. Still waiting for that school to be built five years later. Julius Malema and his band of misfits simply are rabble rousers, much like the Stromabteilung S.A. Brown shirts of the Nazi party in the 1930s, rolling around and causing chaos, attacking people, destroying property. The evidence is endless. Just in the past few years, we have, of course, the situation in Senegal, where they showed up to rip down street signs that were published in Afrikaans in Senegal, leave rubbish bins broken and their trash all the place, and tried to start chaos by attacking people riding around on bicycles and scooters. That was Seneca. Then, of course, there was his famous arrival standing up on the stage there saying, uh, kill the boar, burn them out, burn them out. And 90 plus thousand hectares of prime farmland in the Orange Free State and in the Northern Cape were torched within 96 hours of his admonishment to do that. Prior to that, of course, the economic freedom fighters were urged and exhorted by their leader, Julius Malame, to go out and attack clicks locations. Uh, supposedly protesting, but actually throwing petrol bombs and breaking windows and destroying goods and threatening pensioners collecting their life necessary medication. Then they went to Phoenix to try to threaten people there over a bogus bunch of nonsense with the Phoenix accused claiming racism. The only racism was the fact the EFF was actually marching there against Indian South Africans. And the list goes on and on from firing live ammunition in crowds to killing, singing for the killing of Boers. It's unbelievable what Malema has got along with. But as I've said all along, long before I started broadcasting and since then, the EFF is a party that will never achieve more than 15% of the national vote. There simply aren't that many stupid people in South Africa. That's the truth. Now, South Africans may be a little confused about who to vote for, but not that many people will be confused. Betrayed and infiltrated. In a speech in which he railed against ideological infiltration and betrayal, Leader of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Julius Malema, likened members' recent desertion of his party to assassination attempts. Let's see, who's left the party? There's Floyd Chivambo, the VBS accused. He handed in his beret to join the corruption accused Jacob Zuma's personal vanity project, the MK Party. Former National Chairperson Dalian Pofu, gone. Members of Parliament, Mwanzele Manyi and Busisivwe Makwabene, of course she was removed as public prosecutor, gone. And most recently, Alfred Motsi, the party's first Northwest convener, when it formed the party back in 2013, left the EFF for the MK party. Now, why are they leaving? Well, probably for a couple of reasons. Malema's ego, he's unwilling to see anyone else hold any influence within the party. And so there's no upward mobility for the ambitious. That's one reason. Another reason is just, you know, the, the grifters tend to gather together. And Zuma certainly has the ability to garner more funds from the likes of Louis Liebenberg and other supporters than Julius Malema's failing, flailing political party, which declined in this most recent election. They were obliterated in Quasi-Natal. They don't even exist there virtually anymore. Completely gone. MK wiped them out. People talk about how the ANC was crippled in the Quasi-Natal province. It was the EFF that was truly obliterated by MK's rise. They're gone. Nobody gravitates to their banner. And that carried out in the national elections where they declined under 10%. Well, yesterday, Malema delivered a speech at the Gauteng General Assembly in the run-up to next month's conference, or as they call it, the National People's Assembly. He said the EFF has most recently experienced most dangerous levels of infiltration because this infiltration has been perpetrated by founders of the movement who have been converted into sleeper agents and double agents who sat among us but reported elsewhere. <laughs> so, so, so your party is full of spies. Is that it, JJ? Uh, Julius Malema, Julius Jr. Yeah, okay. The term infiltration is not a buzzword used to smear those who disagree with us, but it's a term that captures best the process of when one deliberately entrenches themselves in an op- organization for purposes of sabotage, deceit, and betrayal. Sabotage, deceit, and betrayal. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Good Lord. He said, unfortunately, we allowed it. 
The ideological infiltration of the EFF began when we allowed our struggle for liberation to be individualized, and it is that process that allowed ambition to thrive and ideological principle to die. What ideological principle do you have, Julius Malema? What policies have you put forward? What have you ever accomplished? What have you achieved? What have you ever run? Let's see. Nothing. Not a damn thing. So what ideological principles do you believe in? Racism? Genocide? Ethnic hatred? Nationalization of the mines? Nationalization of the economy? So you can get your hands on it? What, what, what exactly is your ideology? Maybe that's part of your problem. Your party's simply a populist party based on nonsensical gibberish. Now, he said the infiltration manifests itself when there were attempts to convince the party to collaborate with the historical enemy at the highest level of governance. Now, let me turn that into what that actually is in English for the audience. Let me translate Julius Malema's sentence. Historical enemy at the highest level of governance. This is a racist statement. What he's talking about is that any black South African who works with white South Africans is a collaborationist, a collaborationist, and um, that's the historical enemy, white people. Now, this racism is allowed to proliferate throughout South Africa without nary a complaint from the South African Human Rights Commission. This undermines the dignity of minority South Africans, but of course, the captured South African Human Rights Commission has no interest in addressing that. Going on, Malema recalled that Burkina Faso's Thomas Sankara was assassinated by an erstwhile confidant. He said the deserting of the EFF in this particular moment in our liberation struggle constitutes an assassination attempt. For those unfamiliar with Thomas Sankara, he was a coupist, a military officer, a Marxist revolutionary, and a Pan-Africanist who overthrew the government of Upper Volta in 1983 through a military coup. And then, of course, himself was taken out in the assassination in 1987. And he finally wrapped up his comments by attacking Jacob Zuma. We are not going to sell the future generations for the dreams of an 82-year-old man who is corrupt to the core. Comrades, we are going to fight corruption during Zuma. Even after Zuma, Zuma is corrupt. We are not misled about the corruption of Zuma. Clearly, Julius Blama recognized the threat to his collapsing political party, his vanity project, is another vanity project, that of MK. He's not addressing the ANC or opposition parties. His concern is defections from his party to the MK party, where people are able to get into the grift much easier. Well, there you go. The money is shrinking and disappearing from the EFF, and he is lashing out. How long will the EFF continue? Well, I think it's not going to die now. It'll last for a few years. But clearly, the EFF reached its, reached its zenith a few years ago and is going nowhere but down. So, do we celebrate the death of a radical, violent, racist political party? No, it's still there. And those who believe in it will simply gravitate to other places and express their bigotry, their racism, and their hatred and their Marxist ideas for South Africa, which are, of course, a disaster. And that's one of the reasons why South Africa is in the crap right now. Pseudo-Marxist policies infiltrating society. Well, what say you folks? What are your comments about Malema? Is Malema's EFF dying? Is this just a bump in the road? Will people gravitate back to Juju? What do you say? Interested in your comments. Cheers, folks.